Hodor's victory over Vakuma, Rodak makes a mysterious trip to New York City. But the Space Avenger is preventing me from doing this. My monster Vakuma has been defeated. And to punish you Earthlings, I plan to destroy New York City and you can blame Goldar for it! really enjoyed the first video that I did about space giants and I've decided to do this video as well. These segments are just kind of pasted together from uh, various shots of his ship and I decided to do this narration. Some of the scenes are actually still in Japanese because when they released it finally to collectors uh, the English parts of it were lost sometimes and I wanted to make reference to the fact that Batman the TV show from 66 is almost identical at the bottom to Rodak's ship if you look at it closely enough. And it was really, really a maneuverable ship. You can see it could go down to the Earth, it could um, hover, it could fly in from the atmosphere, fly back out of the atmosphere. Um, Rodak was by far an incredibly uh, uh, intelligent whatever you might call him. I mean, he looks like the devil to me, and I said that in my first video, too, but Rodak is like no character ever that's been on television, ever, anywhere. Uh, that's definitely a mask. You can see that. And these guys here are called Lugo men, the ones that are in the black garb, and uh, they wore basically just uh, black pantyhose over their face because that concealed any real distinction but uh, they should have done it like the blue man group I mean if they'd have painted their faces black uh, you'd never know what they were you know but uh, I guess they wanted to conceal even their eyes and their um, their mouth Rodak is too obviously uh, hung up on himself but it was still a great show to watch in the 70s because WTCG was the only one that aired it I don't know if any of the markets in the United States aired Space Giants during the 70s, but in Atlanta, it was only Channel 17 because it was a, an independent UHF station, and uh, they were the only ones that could get a lot of these reruns or these kinds of special market programs because it wasn't syndicated on any network station. It was always aired uh, through an independent station, usually, you know, UHF stations really had no audiences except for kids, and that's why they probably were allowed to get the program and air it on uh, Channel 17. But Goldar, to me, he's not as important as Rodak because Goldar was pretty much a transformer. He became a rocket or he became a robot. And there's not much to that if you think about it. He either went someplace and used rockets coming out of his stomach or he'd use uh, his own antenna to fry things or kill things. And see, there's Rodak's ship coming in again, and it's still in space. A lot of times he would bring the ship. And it seems like, I guess he had to go to other planets to bring back monsters every time for each show. So he wasn't always, you know, there on Earth. I love that shot of it coming in, though. That is the greatest shot of any part of Space Giants. And when it leaves the uh, the planet... This is Goldar's son, Gam, 
and you can see the Lugo men are about to take him back to Rodak's ship, and you know he was a human being, of course, but the assumption was he was a robot like um, Silvar, and she was obviously human. The original Godar actually was uh, a human face, but they changed it to a mask like they did Rodak. And this sequence here is just oh of uh, Gam himself oh fighting the Lugo men, and uh, at the end of the sequence you're going to see them uh, turn to liquid, if not grits, because that's what I always thought of when I saw him zap them. And you can see, of course, he's standing on some sort of a rotating uh, ceiling uh, thing because he couldn't have he couldn't have levitated like that. You know that. And there's the grits. Anyway, this is pretty much all the material I have, and I uh, appreciate you watching. You can come back whenever you watch and enjoy it again. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>